and now I have the third uh, LED driver on the board. So everything is now wired. All three strings of LEDs are connected to a driver, three different drivers, of course. Um, the boost converter is ready. I've dropped the voltage on there down to about 20 volts, so I'll take that up gradually because this third driver, as I say, is the based on the PT4115. I'm going to keep the voltage for the moment under 30 volts because I know this driver really doesn't like going over 30 volts. So let's plug in. Now the first set of LEDs are from the SEPIC driver, so they're on at full whack. Um, so now I'm going to start turning up the voltage on the boost converter, which pot is voltage, that one there. And as I say, I'm going to keep it below 30 volts. Twenty nine point five. That looks about right. So all the LEDs are on. That's pretty good. So now the next stage in this project is to start sequencing them, switching the uh, three groups of LEDs on in sequence, group one, two, and then three, and going around in a big loop. Now to do the sequencing, these three drivers are going to have their enable inputs connected to my controller. And as I said before, the controller is going to be this Arduino. So the next thing I need to do is screw this little extension board onto the side of the project board so that I can hook up the Arduino interfacing. So there's the Arduino board mounted onto the side of the project board. Now the question I'm asking myself now is about opto isolators. You can see that I've got three opto isolators on this little breadboard. So I am going to use opto isolators, but why? Well, I think there are a number, a couple of um, issues here. One, on the boost converter, the ground line, uh, black here, which goes to battery negative, and the ground on the output aren't necessarily connected straight through on that converter. And that's because this converter has current control. And generally the way that's done is with a low value resistor in that ground line. So I can't treat those two ground lines as connected together. So ground on my um, LED drivers will be different to ground on the Arduino because the Arduino ground is going to come from battery negative. So that's one reason. The second reason is that this converter here, or this driver, I'm half expecting it to uh, go up in flames. And if that happens, the logic compatible enable input could easily get melted into the 30 volt input. And that wouldn't do my Arduino uh, chip, this little dainty chip here, much good. So for those two reasons, I'm going to use opto isolators. Now, I recently bought 50 of these little sharp PC817 opto isolators. I initially bought four from a UK seller and I paid about £2.50 but I wanted them quickly and then I ordered 50 from China and I paid the same £2.50 so I had to wait of course three weeks but by buying them direct from China um, they're about 5p each so they're quite cheap. Right so I've been uh, wiring up the Arduino, the opto isolators and wiring into the first of the three drivers, which is the SEPIC driver. And you can probably see from the uh, flashing lights at the back there that um, this is now under control from the Arduino. Now the Arduino is taking its 12 volts here from directly from the battery. Um, the output from D13 on the Arduino, and it's running the standard blink program, one second on, one second off. D13 is going to the first of my opto isolators. Now on the optos I've also put an LED so you can see when they're on, uh, which I thought would be useful. And then the opto transistor at the back there is going through the yellow and black wires to the SEPIC driver. Now like I said, there is a bit of an issue with this SEPIC driver and I've had to put those wires directly into pins one and two on the chip. And yeah, you can just about see there were some convenient pads on the board so I was able to do that. Now if you look at the LED on the Arduino, this green one at the front here, you can probably see, 
if I angle this properly. Yeah. When it's on, so is my big string of LEDs at the back of the board. However, if you look to the bottom right, the opto LED is inversely on. So what's happening here is that the opto isolator, when the LED is on, the transistor conducts and that pulls the enable pin of the LED driver down to ground, which disables the LEDs. So there's an inversion here. When you turn on the opto LED, you turn off the string of high power LEDs. So what I've done is I've created a second inversion so that when the Arduino turns on, the opto LED turns off. Two inversions, we're back to positive logic, and that means I can write code without having to worry about the inverting logic because I no longer have inverting logic. That's why I've done it this way. So that's the first of the strings of LEDs. Let's just have a look around the back. You can see that um, only one of the three groups of LEDs is coming on. This is because I've turned the boost converter voltage down to 20 volts to stop the other ones coming on. So now I'll press on and wire up the other two um, LED drivers to the other two optos on my board. And then I've got to write a little bit of code to do a three-way sequencing.